Oh, the first slide. Great. So today's talk, we're to the, re the refectory um, from our sacred spaces talk, as, as IT failed me. <laughs> Great. Nope, I'm going to have to wing it without my notes. <laughs> so um, so the, the idea today is to know where we are with the refectory. And um, so we're going to start off by identifying where we are. And then we're going to have a look at the Bible verses from memory. Then we're going to see about doing what we can do now. And then we're going to do some next steps. Great, I'll try one more. Great. Thanks. No, it's just turned itself off. <laughs> you should have just printed it off. <laughs> Now I'll try one more go. No, it's died on me. <laughs> well, here we go. Um, so if you go to the next slide, that'll give me some hints and tips. <laughs> So, yeah, so here we are in um, the seven sacred spaces. Um, it gives us a good overview of where we can look at ourselves in um, the church itself, where we sit in the community, and how we can identify how our life is in balance or not in balance at the moment. We've got... Oh, good, I can see it up there. Yeah, so the, the seven sacred spaces are refectory, library, cell, chapel, chapter, cloister, and garden. And today we're looking at refectory. So if you move to the next slide. Yeah. So the first thing is, what is a refectory? As I found out when I went to university, it is a room used for communal meals in an educational religious institution. When I found that somebody said, oh, I'll meet you in the refectory. And I go, what's a refectory? And then they, and I went, oh, you mean a canteen? And then they looked at me very funny. <laughs> So the word refectory uh, comes from late Middle English, um, from Latin refectorum, um, and it means to refresh or renew. Um, so it's, if you think about the monks, they were out in the garden, they were working really hard, they were getting exhausted, and they needed to be refueled. So they would come to the refectory to eat and um, refuel for the next day. Um, monasteries wasn't all about that hospitality. Some monasteries is... Um, Peter indicated last week, also had hospital wings. So they would provide um, uh, medicine and um, time to be able to recuperate. And they would also have, sometimes they were the, the guest houses of Europe. Um, so you'd have people visiting and providing hospitality to guests as well as the monks themselves. Should we try the next slide? So if we look at what the Bible says about this, there's several um, verses in the Bible that um, identify hospitality as a key thing. It's not an added extra, it's part of our um, Christian life. So it was show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And there's another verse in Titus which says the overseer must be hospitable. And in Hebrews, it tells us not to forget hospitality to a stranger. We've also got hospitality showing up in the Old Testament too. So um, from, from the work that I looked at on the internet, um, hospitality in the Jewish culture at that time was just embedded in it. It wasn't added extra. Um, the Jews were, there was a nomadic people, so you were expected to provide hospitality to your guests when they turned up. Um, not only that is that there were sort of a rule, there were rules that sort of people was, were to follow. So if you were a guest, you were not to eat your host out of house and home. You were supposed to leave enough for them to also eat. And for a host, you were supposed to provide meal. And it was um, your responsibility to look after your guest and protect them. So it was quite, there was a quite good, clear picture of how that hospitality was provided. 
which is unlike today because sometimes you can go to somebody's house. Um, sometimes you need to take your shoes off. Sometimes you don't need to take your shoes off. Sometimes you're expected to sit down and nicely quiet into the corner. Sometimes you're supposed to get up and get involved. So it can be quite a challenge today to be able to rub up against one another and, and understand what the rules are. So we go to the next slide. So for the 21st century examples of hospitality, this sort of ref reminds me of some of the things that have happened to me and, and how hospitality has sort of uh, worked its way into my heart. Because I'm not exactly typical natural hospitality person. I might have the spirit, but I'm a bit weak on the practical. If all the other ele elements of those um, sections of the pie chart are all nicely in balance, I can get my house to a fit state where I can let people in. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I need some help, and this is how I get help. So there's New Wine and Spring Harvest. They're a Christian... Um, uh, conferences that go on and this church has gone to both of those in the past and what I've found great about that it's not just the good teaching that you get but it's the time that you can spend with your brothers and sisters in Christ as part of the church and we'd eat together so with new wine you're camping you're <laughs> picnicking with spring harvest um, there's times where people would invite you over to their chalet to have a nice cup of tea and biscuit in between the, the sessions or you could go to the restaurant area and eat with people. So that was a, a really good time of getting to know people. Um, the little picture of the tree is the lockdown hospitality that me and my friends have. Um, when we were allowed to meet outside, we'd get our camping chairs and our thermos flasks and go off into the, the orchard at Langford and we'd sit a nicely distance apart and catch up with each other and pray. So there are ways around this time in lockdown that we can also... Um, provide hospitality to one another the other thing is our bridge cafe which is um, we are able to open our doors to the community and ourselves to create that community spirit to be hospitable it could be that you just buy somebody another cup of tea or a cup of coffee out there and the fish and chips reminds me of when dora um, our beloved founder, one of our beloved founder members um, elderly couldn't see very well couldn't hear very well she wanted to do hospitality. So what I did was I joined together with her. So we decided to do what was feasible, not perfect. It's not perfecting hospitality. It's practicing hospitality, how to get better. So we'd have one person providing the fish and chips. Um, I'd get there a little bit early because Dora was hosting because it was her home. And I'd put everything together. I'd get the condiments out. I'd put the plates out. And um, we would have just normally two people visiting at a time. And that was great because Dora couldn't hear very well, she couldn't see very well, so it wasn't about having loads of people around, it was about having just a couple of people and catching up with them. And that worked really well because we were doing it together as part of community. So that, I think that's what I'd encourage at this slide, is find somebody you can get together with. It's not all on your shoulders, you don't have to do everything, it doesn't have to be perfect. Can I have the next slide, please? So we sort of get to the fact that what can we do now next? So the key thing for me is to find out how your, house, how, how your life is in balance. Is God putting a particular element on your heart? Is there a particular sacred space that has come to mind? So if you remember the first slide that I showed up was Ian's artistic <laughs> creation from week one with his sacred space being around his table. Is, is hospitality the focus for you at the moment? Or is it potentially the garden? Is it work? Is it something that you need to do at work to be more hospitable in work? Is it taking the time to listen to a colleague or co-worker to, to it be more than just turning up to do a job? You're there as another human being. Has any particular person come to mind? Again, we had earlier this morning, they were talking about, do you want to phone somebody? Is there somebody that you want to phone? Just pick up the receiver or your, <laughs> and press the button. We've had other things that we've going on. Um, Erica mentioned this morning the food bank and the food larder. Is there something stirring up within you that would, would call you to that type of ministry, to join in with that? 
And is that sacred space really calling to you at the moment? Our reading this morning was about um, how this lady responded to Jesus. So the key thing for our Christian life is how, do we, how are we to be hospitable to Jesus? When we give him the keys to our life, are we inviting him in as a guest or are we now a guest in his home? We've asked him to take control, him to take the lead. Is he the one who's coming into our lives? And I think what really encourages me about the lady this morning that we read about in the the reading and the way Jesus responds to us is that he doesn't expect us to clean up our house, to make it look perfect, to get everything sorted before he arrives. He's totally willing to meet us where we are and to walk into the mess and the chaos and to help us clean it up. So I'm not quite sure how long that was, (laughs) but uh, that's the end of my talk.